live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE live here in Las Vegas for Amazon Web Services, AWS reInvent 2018. I'm John Furrier with Lauren Cooney, the host of theCUBE on this set. There's two sets and we're getting all the great interviews from the smartest people here in the ecosystem. AWS reInvent is the industry conference that makes it all happen in cloud. I'm excited to have Lynn Lucas here, CMO of Cohesity, back on theCUBE, CUBE alumni. Also, the architect of the greatest party of all time, the Cohesity parties. You guys had a great party last night. I tweeted some live, live footage of it, got a little bit of backlash on Twitter, but it's okay, you know. We don't want that. A lot of FOMO. Hopefully also some, the architect of some great marketing here. We're here to get the word out about Cohesity and our news with Amazon. So glad to have you here. Thanks for having me on the set again. You guys really hit the formula for um, parties at events. Some of it can be kind of boring. You bring artists in, you have a great venue, you glam it up with green, the color of Cohesity. How's that working out for you guys? What's been the feedback? How's that? People last night were jamming, great crowd. Tell us what's going on, what's the success look like, what's the, what's the vibe? Yeah, well it certainly is about appreciating our partners and customers that are here, but really it's all about getting the word out about Cohesity, and you know, I think you know the numbers here were somewhere between 50 and 60,000 people here, crazy, at reInvent, and we want people to know what Cohesity can do for them in terms of their use of Amazon and making that investment even better and smarter for them for what we call secondary data and apps. So that was the purpose of the party, thank our customers and partners and get the word out about what we can do. As they say in the old marketing cliche, if you got the sizzle, you got to have the steak. Absolutely. So tell me, you got some great sizzle, great, great marketing, congratulations, doing a great job, love working with you and love your Coney events. Where's the action on the product side? Where's the meat on the bone? Sure thing, so we had a really important announcement here uh, yesterday, uh, extending our partnership with Amazon. We had an extension to some already great killer features that we have. Three things, so three things you got to know. One, integration without agents to do backup of your cloud native AWS applications. Full failover and fail back to the Amazon cloud and back again for DR. And we also are now offering integration with Snowball. So a lot of customers looking at how they can get uh, more of their data into Amazon and now we facilitate that and of course give you the indexing that allows that to become searchable and usable for the longer term. I want to ask you a question. I saw a presentation this morning at Teresa Carlson's public sector breakfast, packed house again. She's really doing an amazing job. Uh, so a shout out to her and her team. But the presentation was from the deputy of the FBI counterterrorism, and she talked about all the bad things that have happened and how they tried to catch up and find the bad guys, our gals. And the problem they have is that they have a data crisis. And she said that, the FBI has a data crisis. And they can't put the puzzle together fast enough because the data, although the data's there, they can't get it out of the databases and there are all these different fragmented systems. This is a problem. How are you guys helping clients fix this fragmentation problem? Are you, is that an area you're solving? What's your vision, uh, Koshi's vision around this notion of how does cloudification solve this speeding up of value around data that's kind of spread out everywhere? Yeah, so you hit the nail on the head. We call this mass data fragmentation, and that's the problem that she's talking about. In fact, we just completed a global study of secondary data and nine out of 10, not surprisingly, of IT organizations around the globe think that this is going to cost them somewhere between 50 and 100% more than what they're currently spending to manage their data because it's in silos. It's in silos on premise, but it's also then started to silo inside the cloud. Um, and how Cohesity helps is creating a unified platform, what we call the data platform, and spanning the on-premise and the cloud, the multi-cloud environment, and providing some really unique capabilities to help organizations take that fragmentation and now remove it, bust those silos, put it in one place, give you global search, uh, indexing, and then compression, because we all know how many copies 
uh, excuse me, uh, deduplication, save storage, but then also the removal of copies, because we all know how many copies there are out there. So Cohesity's brand message, as you guys keep pounding the frequency, get the brand message out there, is what? What's the brand promise for Cohesity? Great question. The brand promise is we are going to end your mass data fragmentation problems and give you web scale simplicity, right? So why are so many organizations here, right? They love what they see with AWS and that web scale and that hyperscale uh, simplicity, but many companies, right, still have a lot of on-premise systems and so they're struggling with it. Well, our founder, Moet Aaron, was one of the original developers of the Google file system, knows a little bit about building distributed file systems and so he's brought that into an affordable platform for the enterprise to give you that scalability across your on-premise, your public cloud, private cloud edge sites. And I think, I think that is critical across multiple environments, especially as people are trying to develop across those multiple environments. There really needs to be that consistency for them. Uh, some of the things that I've picked up that I hear about you guys, it's, it's really about uh, user experience. It seems like you care a lot about that. You've got one graphical you know, interface that you actually use and it makes, I think, data less scary to folks. Uh, I would say the ecosystem, I don't know, you know, I looked at your architecture, I, I don't know who's not in that, those boxes, but you make it very clear, um, you know, in particular, and I think also saving, saving people money, you know, it, that's, that's going to be critical because everyone is scaling out and they're spending more and more and more and what they're spending more on is, you know, these, this vast, vast amount of data that they can't control anymore and they, it's, you know, just kind of churning. Yeah. And, uh, we just had this great guy on here, and he was talking about uh, you know, you know the movie that he did, and he's the one-stop shop like IT guy at this company, and he's the he thinks he he's like they saved my life, was what he told yes. us about you guys. So, so I think you hit the nail on the head. It's all about simplicity. I mean, again, in our new study, and I don't think this is going to surprise anyone, but bringing it up to date for 2018 you still have on average five to six systems just for backup, up to 15 if you count all secondary, which is files and objects, analytics, test dev. And think about IT trying to manage all of that complexity from a user interface, a procurement, a training enablement. So we give them that one-stop dashboard simplicity. Yeah. And then on top of that, build a foundation for the test dev organization, analytics organization, to now do more with the data. Because it's not enough to just bring, bust those silos and bring the data into one place. We need to do something with yeah. that data, right? Absolutely. And you know, you guys were talking before we came on camera about storytelling, and you know, I look at the story of the cloud. I want to get your perspective on this. And Lauren, feel free to chime in, because I think you got a good input on this. If you look at what the cloud is doing to changing the game, this narrative is changing. Andy Jassy calls it the old guard. Other people call it the legacy systems. We've all been in the tech industry. We've kind of seen where it's been and where it's going. Now, more visibility now and where it's going, AI, more automation, all this greatness. The narrative's changing. Who's ready? Who's prepared? What is the story of the modern cloud era? What is that narrative and how should companies be talking to themselves? What's their self-talk? How do they? What's your thoughts on the story of the modern era? What's actually happening in your, in your mind? Yeah, I, well I think, you know, the narrative is around if you are not cloud forward. I don't like to call it cloud native because I think that really doesn't speak to so many organizations. So it's about being cloud forward um, and may, having that mindset, right, that you are going to be thinking about what are the advantages of the AWS cloud for me and my business? How can I use that to gain efficiencies? And that is something that I think really does separate the old guard from the new guard. You know, if I think about Cohesity in that vein, compared to some of the legacy solutions out there, that is what Moed Aaron built in. We're cloud native from the beginning with an S3 interface, but with those interfaces back into the enterprise world so that we can help customers bring that forward, data portability and app portability. And that's Amazon's mission. They just forward, forward, forward progress. 
They're not even looking in their rear view, although Andy does look at Oracle and like to go after Oracle. Lauren, what's your take on the storytelling? Because I'd love to get your perspective on this too. I hate to go on a little tangent here, but I think it ties to the cohesity brand promises. You got developers changing, you got IT experts uh, being DevOps kind of, you know, cultural change there, and you got the role of open source communities. This is a new ma mosh pit of, of action. Yeah, I think, your... I think it's a mosh pit of action, but it's more of a mosh pit of opportunity, yeah. <laughs> if you really want to look at it. Uh, you know, you have uh, developers. So, you know, in 2003, I was at BEA building developer communities around web servers. And then I actually went, you know, in 2008, I was at Microsoft building the web platform, which was the precursor to Azure. And, you know, then skip ahead, you know, 10 years, and this is, this is where we are, and this is what we're looking at. And I think that, what we've gotten to along that you know, kind of timeline is it has to be easy for users. Development has to be easy. It doesn't matter where in the stack people are working, it has to be accessible. People have to be able to learn it or upskill to it very, very quickly. Yep. And it's, it's really a, a new you know, shape and form that's kind of coming to the table. And as people look to study computer science and things along those lines, it will be important but it will become less important as more companies start to look at the Salesforce model where you literally can become a developer in a week and yeah. things along those lines. That's what, what I think the cloud is really bringing to the table. It's a new software methodology, clearly. Amazon announcing this cool ground station, satellite as a service, spin up, fly your own drones, whatever you want to do with satellite. You don't have to provision a satellite anymore, just turn it on. It's going to power the edge, because the edge is where connectivity stops. So if you've got connectivity everywhere, that now means that all data will be coming in even probably more exponentially. This is kind of in your wheelhouse. As you look forward, as you go cloud forward and IoT edge forward, more data is coming. Are yeah. you ready for that? What's the vision for you guys? How, what do you handle all that? Well, you know, I think um, the story about more data with respect is old. We all know that, right? You know. What people haven't been able to solve is, as it's coming in, how are you going to keep track of it, and is it even feasible to try to put it all in one place? And I think the answer is not really, right? I mean, think about yeah. IoT and all these edge sites yeah. and the promise of what's going on. So this vision, which I love, is of a spanning system that gives you that operating model of one platform but not trying to do the impossible of continually trying to put data all in physically one place, coupled with, I so agree with you, this API first economy. If you aren't building systems that way, um, you know, then it really isn't built for the future because who can imagine all of the things that we do with our smartphones and we like to think of what the Cohesity data platform is, is the analogy to the smartphone, right? We used to carry the flip phone, the GPS, the music player, the flashlight, that device changed the world and then we changed it again by using APIs to build new apps on it. Cohesity Data Platform is that same vision. We're going to create that unified operating environment and then through APIs let so, companies build on it. So it's a data platform, it's not so much a category of backup and recovering. It's a benefit, a lot of value there. Get a I, magic quadrant maybe written up someday, but you're a data platform. Yeah, it's well, I go, I go back uh, to that analogy of the smartphone, right? You know, so uh, we solve and want to solve and be the world's best at solving some of the toughest problems, and data protection is one of them. Like, I'll speak to uh, one of our other AWS customers that's here, uh, which is Dolby, and Dolby had a massive challenge with their on-premise data center moving their workloads to AWS since 2016, had a fire in their data center, and started realizing, hey, there's a lot of benefits to doing more backup in the cloud, but also doing more archive to the cloud, both from a protection point of view as well as a cost savings point of view. And that is you know, the kind of thing where we're going to solve each of those use cases. Your phone is still great as a phone, but it's also great to order you Uber here and yeah. maybe get you a meal. And there's data in there too. Okay, yeah. question, final question for you is um, competition. A lot of heat in the kitchen with competition. You don't, you don't shy away from it. I love that about you. Um, you guys are loud and proud at Cohesity. Love that brand. Super green. Yeah, super green, green light, go. Green is money too. How are you different from competition? Why are you winning? What's the advantage? 
Well, let me go back to, uh, I think, uh, the phrase, old guard, new guard. Uh, so I think there's an old guard and we would clearly separate ourselves from the old legacy solutions that are not hyper-converged and are not web scale and are not web first or cloud forward. There's uh, another group that are looking at, uh, and even some of the old players now trying to move into the new world, but I think what differentiates Cohesity is three things. A true spanning file system web scale that is not focused on just being a better backup. So you just touched on backup, it's an important workload, but our vision is to consolidate all secondary workloads. So that's backup, yes, but it's also files and objects, it's also then making that data productive for test dev and analytics and doing that across, again, the edge, the cloud, and on premise. And that's what makes us different. Final, final questions. I always do this because one pops in my head when you're talking. Andy Jass is going to talk a lot about this tomorrow because I got a little preview on Monday last week. Net new workloads, latency, all these new things. He's got some of the announcements trickling out. What he's seeing, and a lot of people are, and we included, we agree with him. When you have the kind of compute that's available and the kind of data platforms and the horizontally scalability of the cloud, these new net workloads will be enabled. AI has been enabled by great compute. AI has been around for decades. Mm -hmm. And it's got a renaissance with compute. What new net, work, net new workloads do you envision cohesively bumping into or uh, pioneering in the future? Well, actually, we're going to look to the developer community, honestly, right? I, I think we have a strong ethos and belief that, you know, we're not the smartest people in the room, so to speak. So let's bring that out to the developers and let them in their companies or in the third parties, the great community that's here, figure out what is the next thing that we can do when we don't have these fragmented silos of data and we can actually see in its entirety what is available to us what might be possible. I think it could change the world. Developer community is a very key part of it, would agree. Again, there's hardcore new developers emerging, IT expert developers, open source community contributors, all coming together. All here in theCUBE covering it. That's our audience, that's, your, that's you guys out there, bringing the best action here at reInvent. I'm John Furrier, Lauren Cooney here with Lynn Lucas with Cohesity. We're back with more live coverage here from the two sets, dub, double barrel shotgun of theCUBE. We call it theCUBE Cannons. Stay with us for more coverage after this short break.